the Zionist Congress in Baltimore, which is hotel in New York, the name of hotel in New York. The, Cong the Zionist Congress have a meeting there in the early 40s and decided to establish a Jewish state in Palestine. The Jewish scholar, intellectual, Hannah Arendt, wrote immediately after this meeting, saying to the Zionist leadership, you are proposing to the native people, to the Palestinians, either to leave the country, to let you build your state, or to be second degree citizens. The word apartheid then, it wasn't used in the early 40s. She said in another article, this idea or this project to establish a Jewish state or Jewish, she called this Jewish sovereignty in Palestine would lead to expelling the people or discriminating against them, the Palestinian people. She actually predicted the Palestinian Nakba by logical analysis. And tragically, in Palestine, the logical analysis, analysis overlapped the historical evolution and the historical events. It was there in the very beginning of Zionist project saying that you, they wanted to, 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 uh, to establish a Jewish state in Palestine, no way it would lead to either apartheid or transfer, in the words of today. And Zionism managed to do both. The Palestinian tragedy was enhanced because the God, the, the fathers, the fathers of Zionism, of the Jewish state, the Zionist leadership, didn't want only to establish a Jewish state. They wanted to establish a democratic state also. Because they have self-image of Democrats. And that's impossible. If you want to establish a Jewish state, logically, people, the Palestinians, could stay in their country under apartheid, under discrimination, without full civic rights. But they will stay in their villages and towns. But if you wanted to, be, to, to establish also a democratic state, democracy, Building democracy needs to expel the Palestinians and to create artificial majority which will celebrate glorious democracy. The obsession to establish Israeli democracy leaded to expelling the vast majority of Palestinians from their homeland. We are the victims of democracy. Not only the victims of the obsession to establish a Jewish state. And in the eyes of some Western intellectuals, what is the suffering of these misery Palestinians toward and versus the establishing of glorious Israeli democracy in the barbarian East. So many crimes 
could be implemented in the name of democracy. Many crimes could be implemented to establish democracy. This is the dirty secret of Israeli democracy. It was established on transfer. No transfer, no democracy. You cannot solve this equation, Jewish and democratic state, without expelling the Palestinians from their homeland. So I think what happened in Palestine is not like some Arab historians speak, there was a conspiracy in small, uh, you know, uh, uh, small rooms and uh, conspiracy to expel the Palestinians and to make their uh, tragedy, etc., etc. It wasn't a, a conspiracy. And it wasn't accidental. You know, if you look at, read uh, some Israeli, uh, even, uh, uh, how to say, liberal Israeli, or considered to be liberal Israeli historians, they would say, by accident, in this village, they kicked the people out. And by accident in the other village, and in the third village there was another accident. Everything is accidentally. Nothing. There was no plan. There was nothing. It was a natural. I don't want even to read what was said in the, uh, in the protocols of Ben Gurion and the Israeli leadership how to make the plan. They couldn't build the state without that. That's the main, the main thing. If Palestinians would stay in their country, we will have another Knesset, another parliament, another elections, another state. Sometimes when I sit in the Knesset, I imagine what will ha would happen if there was no Palestinian refugee problem. And if there was no expelling of people from their country, how the democratic parliament would look like? I think, first of all, it will, it will be more, much more interesting. <laughs> but it would reflect what the people, and I think there will be a Palestinian majority, I don't care if there is a Palestinian majority, but the Palestinians will be there as they are uh, natives of uh, the, uh, the country. And sometimes people are misleaded by the scene, by the apparently scene of Israeli democracy. If you look at any Israeli elections, and you follow, you are journalist from Boston Chronicle, I don't know what's its name, and you go to, 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 to cover Israeli uh, 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 elections. You will see nothing. You will see a, a normal elections. Free elections with debates, with everything. And you would write, democracy in action, everything is okay. What about the absentees? If the committee of Harvard students decided to make a journey to the Caribbeans, or wanted, the head of the committee wants to go to the Caribbeans, but the majority in the committee, from the law school and others, want to go to Egypt. So out of 15, there are nine against going to the Caribbeans, want to go to Egypt. The head of the committee, the chairman of the committee, chair, chairperson, wants to go to the Caribbeans and they have only six voting for him. 
what he do? He took seven students and put them in a room, an apartment here, and close on them and have a meeting of the committee and invite the press. And the committee will discuss a democratic process in action. Why to go to the Caribbean is better than to go to Egypt. It's cheaper, it's more interesting, etc. And there are open and saying, no, Egypt is better, etc. And then come the, the, the time of voting, six against two. And the journalist will write, it's perfect. It's perfect. That's what happened in Palestine. That's what happened in Palestine. And that's, this is the dirty secret of Israeli democracy. They are hiding the Palestinian people, the Palestinian refugees, where they are. Where they are. 